This video is going to take a look at the default keyword which has been introduced to interfaces with Java 8. So first we're going to take a look at how and when we can use the default keyword when adding methods into our interfaces. Then we're going to look at how the default keyword is backwards compatible with your application and what it actually means. And then lastly, we're going to take a look at maybe a corner case where a class implements two different interfaces and both those interfaces have the same default method name and signature. This video also relates a little bit to Lambda expressions, so I'm going to leave the link to my video on Lambda expressions in the description down below. Please give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful, and if you want to see weekly videos on Java, also consider subscribing. So you can begin by taking a look at the project setup. So we have this interface called bedroom and it has two abstract methods, one which is called room occupied, that returns a Boolean, and then get bedroom ID, that returns a string. And this might be for say an application for renting out different bedrooms. And we have a few classes that implement this interface. So we have the class bungalow. It defines a bedroom ID within it that is instantiated through the constructor then it overrides the two methods from the bedroom interface that it implements. So it returns false for room occupied, and then the get bedroom ID will return bungalow, followed by a colon, and then the bedroom ID defined for that bungalow class instance. It's very similar for the flat class, and then a similar pattern for the house class. I also have an application class that we can use just to test these different classes. So we instantiate a house with bedroom ID 101, a bungalow with 102, and a flat with 103. And all I'm going to do is system out print the occupied boolean and then the bedroom ID. So to begin, we can see that with the house, we have the room is occupied as true. And then the bedroom ID is house 101. And then we have false for the bungalow, whether the room is occupied. Then we have bungalow 102 and then false and flat 103 for the final flat. So we're going to take a look at when we might want to use the default keyword. So the default keyword allows us to add common functionality to our interface that can then be received by all the classes that implement that interface. So let's say we want to rent out our bedroom or we want to have a method for renting out the, the bedroom. It would be void rent out and let's say it takes in the bedroom ID. By adding this new abstract method we can now see the bungalow class has a compile error. Same for the flat class and also the house class because they're not overriding this rent out method. So the default keyword can be really useful here when we want to add functionality to all of the classes that implement an interface while also providing the same logic behind that implementation. So at the moment, each of our individual classes will have to provide their own implementation on how they want to use this rent out method. But let's say all of these classes use the same database, they all accept the bedroom ID, and they all send the same database transaction. We then wouldn't need to provide individual implementations in all of these classes for this same method. In fact, with the default keyword, we can now do this from directly from the interface to save us having to write out this rent out method equally across all the implementations of our bedroom. In a real application, you might even have dozens of implementations for a single interface. So the default keyword can become really powerful in this sense. So we can use the default keyword by starting the method of default. And it's no longer an abstract method, which means it must have a method body. Within here, we might connect to the database. We might pass in the bedroom ID to the SQL, and then we can change the room occupied Boolean to true. And now even with this new method called rent out in our bedroom interface, we can see that the house, the flat, and the bungalow, they all still compile just as we expect them to be. 
And this is what backward compatibility means with the default keyword. So in the previous version of our application where we didn't have this rent out method, the classes are all fine. And then even if we do add that method, none of the classes have broken and therefore the default keyword is backward compatible. If I head back into the application class and, and view the methods that are available for our flat instance, we can now see that the rent out method is available. We can also see the same for the house and also for the bungalow. So prior to Java 8, the interface and abstract class differed because an abstract class could have abstract methods and it could also have non-abstract methods. But since Java 8 and the use of the default word to create method bodies within an interface, you may wonder what the difference is between an interface and an abstract class now and when you might want to use one or the other. So if I change the interface of bedroom into an abstract class, and ensure that all of our classes extend the bedroom rather than implement it, we can now see there isn't much difference between what we had before where, it was just, where the bedroom was just an interface. So the first key difference between the interface and the abstract class, even with Java 8, is that the class that uses the abstract class has to now extend it. And a class can only ever extend one other class. So it isn't confined to having the only class that it can extend being our abstract class. The second difference is that an abstract class can still hold variables and properties within it. It can hold the state of different properties and this is how it also differs from an interface. And the third point to consider is that an abstract class can also be instantiated through a constructor. So there is that opportunity for you to create a constructor and to also provide some logic within it. So I've reverted the bedroom back into an interface and we're going to quickly take a look at one corner case which might be a class implementing two different interfaces that have the same method signature for a default method. So I'll create a new interface and I'm going to call it swimming pool. And just like the bedroom, it will have the default void rent out that takes in the bedroom ID. And then if we get our house to also implement the swimming pool, we can see that there's a compile error on our house. And if we hover over it, it says house inherits unrelated default for rent out string from the bedroom and also the swimming pool. So if we ever did have a circumstance where a class implements two interfaces that have the same method signature for a default method, that class itself will have to provide its own implementation for rent out. So therefore rent out might be for the bedroom and then also for the swimming pool. But that would have to be implemented in each class itself rather than relying on the interface. I'm going to quickly demonstrate the bedroom default method working to the console just so that we can see it working. So we can see the rent bedroom house, rent swimming pool house method has been called from the own implementation. And then down below for the flat, we also have rent out bedroom, which is the implementation that we can see from the interface itself. So that summarizes this video on how you can use the default keyword and when you might want to use it. We've also compared the interface with the abstract class now that we have the default methods and also looked at a corner case where you might have two interfaces with the same kind of default method and how that might be handled by a class.